Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss receivable in general, but we'll focus specifically on an account called accounts receivable. Now receivable as a topic in accounting is very important. Whether you are an accounting student, you are a CPA candidate, CMA candidate, CFA candidate, or even a finance student. So you need to understand what is a receivable. A receivable is a claim against others, usually against customers. But you will see shortly that we could have receivable against some group other than customers. And why would you have that claim against customers? Because you provided the customer some goods or services you provide them goods or services therefore you have a claim against them if you did provide goods or services you will see it's called accounts receivable if you provided money if you gave the money you will have a notes receivable so that's but generally speaking that's the receivable a claim against someone else they owe you money for some reason a receivable could be current or the receivable could be non-current because what we have to do on the balance sheet, when we have a balance sheet, we have to classify our assets at either current or non-current. Generally speaking, all receivables that are trade receivable, which is receivable as a result of providing goods or services, which is account receivable, are usually current. Now, we could have a non-current when we provide a loan or money to others. It's called notes receivable. It could be current, it could be non-current. But in this session, we will focus specifically on trade receivables or account receivable. They mean the same thing. So most likely we will be looking, not most likely, we will be looking at current receivables. And we have two types of receivables. If you want to break them down, we have the trade, which is what? As a result of providing goods or services, you provided a service, you sold your product to that customer. And here what we have is account receivable. And sometime when you when you sell your goods or services, you make the customer sign a loan. So you basically, you are a lender. You provided the service and you lend the money at the same time. What you have, you have a trade notes receivable. Now, accounts receivable, 99.99% of the time is current. Notes receivable could be current, could be non-current. Now, don't worry about notes receivable. We'll discuss notes receivable in separate recordings. We'll have one or two or three notes receivable. The other type of receivables we have is non-trade. What does it mean, non-trade? Trade means as a result of providing goods and services. Non-trade means it has nothing to do. You, you, Someone owes you money, but not for services or product you delivered. Like what? You could have a tax refund. You filed your taxes with the government and you are waiting to be paid. That's a receivable, but that's a non-trade. Non-trade means it has nothing to do with your business, like a tax refund claims. We could have interest and dividend receivable. If you have money in the bank, at the end of the year, you might have earned some interest. But that interest will not be paid until next period. Or sometime you might have a bonds and that bonds might accrue interest. Well, you have an interest receivable. If you own stocks, once the company declared the stocks, it becomes a receivable for you. You're waiting to be paid. You could also have loans to employees. When you lend money to, to your employees, you give them money in a form of a loan. That's a non-trade receivable. You could also do the same thing for your subsidiaries. If you have a company, and that company might lend the money, so the parent might lend money to its subsidiary. They might lend the money. They have a form of a receivable. Do, it's usually called do from. Then you might have deposit paid as a guarantee of performance or payment or to cover potential damages. You make a deposit somewhere when you have a business to do what? For 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 the other party to perform but that's a receivable they have to give you back that money those are non-trade we don't worry about non-trade receivable we focus on trade receivable specifically in this session we'll focus on accounts receivable it doesn't mean notes is not important we'll talk about that later but for now accounts receivable and if you have non-trade receivable they are listed they are grouped in one category, then in the notes of the financial statement, they will explain what they are.
In this session, let's focus specifically on accounts receivable. Let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Dollar. And the customer agreed to pay $100. Therefore, that's the consideration to be received, $100. Now, this is a simple example. Is this the only thing that we have to take into account as far as initial valuation? Not at all. I gave you a simple example. My son, Adam, selling his transformer to his friend, Ryan. But in the real world, when businesses buy goods and services, there are variable consideration, other consideration we have to be aware and familiar with, and we need to know how to deal with it. What are those variable consideration? Well, we could have a trade discount. We could have a sales or a cash discount. We could have sales returns and allowances. And we could also have to worry about the time value of money. Those are consideration that we have to take into, into account when we are doing what? Recording the receivable. And I'm going to go over each of these items separately. Now, if the transaction is simple, just like Adam selling Ryan and Ryan promising to pay this $100, nothing else. So it's easy. But in the real world, when you buy goods and services, you might buy in volume. Think about companies like Walmart or Costco or retailers. They buy in large quantity. So when they go to purchase something, they might have they might have a catalog price, something they want to buy, and the catalog price is $100. And the company don't want to change the catalog price. It's $100. But this company will give you a discount based on the quantity, based on the amount, based on the volume, based on the number of units you are buying. So if you purchase 1,000 units, they will give you a 20% off. But they don't want to kind of, you know, say it's $100 if you pay, if you purchase 100 units, it's 20% off. They don't want to print this on the catalog. The regular price is 120, but if you pay 1,000 units, they'll give you 20% off. Maybe if you pay 10,000 units, they might give you 30% off, so on and so forth. So now what do we do if we purchase that 1,000 unit? We record the sale at $80. As far as we are concerned, as far as we are concerned as, as, the, buy, as the buyer, and as the sellers, the transaction took place at exactly $80. So what does that mean? It means if there's any trade discount, when we sell the item for $80, we record the sale at $80. We don't care what the catalog price is. This is what I'm trying to say. We don't care what the catalog price is. What we care about is how much did we actually sell them for $80. Think about when you go to buy a car. When you go to buy a car, think of it. When you see the list price, they might have the car at 28500 You end up paying for the car 23000 And when you go back, you'd say, okay, how much did that car cost you? 23000 How much would the seller say they sold it for? 23000 It doesn't matter what the catalog price is. Just It's what the transaction took place at. So this is what, what we care about. Now let's talk about sales or cash discounts. Cash discounts is pretty self-explanatory. If you want to buy something, the, the, the company might have two prices. One for if you want to buy it on credit for $1,000 or if you want to pay cash right now, $950. If there's a cash discount, simply put the transaction went down for $950 just like the trade discount. How about the sales discount? The sales discount is when the company sells you something on credit and when they get sell you something on credit, they have to give you some time to pay, like 30 days, 60 days, sometime 90 days. Now, although the company sold it on credit, but they really want you to pay as early as possible. So what do they do? They want to incentivize you. So they give you a discount, a discount to do what? An incentive to pay 
early they don't want you to pay they don't want you to wait 30 days they want you to pay as as early as possible how do they do so they would say okay you pay me within 10 days I'll give you for example 2% off so this is how the discount is provided 2% slash 10 and 30 how do we read the discount it means it means you have 30 days to pay this is the 30 days we call the 30 days the credit period okay so this is the credit period however from now till day 10 this is called the discount period if you pay me within this discount period I will give you 2% of the bill now as the buyer you're you're you want to take the maximum advantage you pay them on day 10 but they want you to pay as early as possible which is they give you a discount period so this is called a variable consideration because you you sold them something for a thousand dollar but you don't know if you're going to receive a thousand dollar or two percent less than a thousand dollar why because you never know whether they are going to pay or pay within 10 days or wait for 30 days so on june 3rd Let's take a look at this multiple choice question from farhatlectures.com. The discount used to avoid frequent changes in catalogs, to alter prices for different quantity purchase, or to hide the true invoice price from competitor is called what? What do we call this? When we don't want to sh show the discounted price because we don't want to tell our competitors how much we're selling our product for, because we just show one price, or sometimes the price fluctuate. It's called what? Is it cash discount, trade discount, price break discount, early payment discount? Is it an early payment discount? No, early payment discount is called, that's the sales discount, is when you give a discount when the customer pays early. We're not dealing with sales discount. Price break discount, I really don't know what this is, so we can take it out. Is it a cash discount? No, cash discount is when the customer pays cash immediately and you give them a discount. What's left is trade discount trade discount is when you want to offer a discount for different quantity purchased and you don't want to keep changing your catalog because you're gonna treat different customers differently a customer that's gonna buy 100,000 units will be treated differently than a customer that's buying 500 unit or a customer that's purchasing 1 million unit also you want to hide the true prices from competitors because you don't want you don't want to tell your competitors exactly how much you are charging so you will show a price and you will charge totally a different price for customers based on negotiation so this is called the trade discount what should you do well whether you are an accounting student, finance CPA CMA studying for a professional certification go to farhatlectures.com look at additional resources lectures multiple choice other resources that will help you the best investment you could make is invest in yourself good luck study hard and of course stay safe